Welcome back to the reporting world for SPM. So the first thing is I would like to brief you about the session which we will have today. So now we will learn about OTBI reporting. So OTBI, so any any idea about OTBI anyone has in the house now? Yes. So OTBI is um, basically a, a functionality within, within Oracle of Fusion where you go and you choose your subject area uh, where each subject area is um, kind of divided by each um, real-time tables where each table or each um, data, a portion of data is saved under a table name ending with a real-time. So, for example, you can go to compensation or you can go to payroll and grab a um, section within that subject area to choose your fields and just create your report. Similar to BI, but is very more simplified and um, uh, is more user friendly. So you create your report and you look at it. Uh, also, OTBI, you can use BI Publisher data model, which you already created in order to pull it and just use it if you, I haven't done this part yet, but um, you can use a data model that you created yourself in order to pull the data from that data model. OTBI is more transactional data. Is The difference between OTBI and BI is the letter T in OTBI, and that stands for transactional data. So uh, before this, we'll, uh, for the definition part, we'll try to understand. Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition, that is OBIEE, is a business intelligence platform that is used to access and present data in easy to understand formats, such as tables, graphs. OTBI Enterprise for SCM Cloud Service is built on the Oracle OBI platform. To deliver targeted information about your organization data with dashboards and reports. So OTBI is another reporting tool by which we can show the data which we have collected in SCM module or SCM cloud service module. So here as Ozzy said we have subject areas. Now what is a subject area? So a subject area is exactly a data model which we have seen in BIP but it is already prepared for us with all the joints and with all the different business logic which has to be applied in it. And so we use the subject areas to create different kind of reports depending upon our business need. So as we have learned about BIP, so here also I will just quickly tell you about the, the navigations of it. So the navigations over here, they are still are the same. The first over here you will see the recent files. Here you have home, catalog, favorites, dashboards is the new term over here, new, open, sign in and. So whenever we want to create uh, something new, we will again go to new itself. So I was start talking about subject areas. So whenever you, whenever you create a report in, uh, whenever you create a report in OTBI, it is known as uh, the answer or analysis. Previously it was used to be known as analysis. Now it is known as answers. So what we need to do is, we need to come over here, we need to click on analysis. Clear? Yeah. So whenever you so whenever you need an analysis of something, first we need to have a model data, right? We spoke about this. Yeah. So I was talking about whenever what is subject area? That is a very important thing to know. What is subject area? Subject area is the data is just like a data model. Which you used to use in BIP. 
So whenever we create an analysis, as for analysis, the first thing was creating the data model. Here we have some ready-made data model which is already created. As as he was telling, so they all end with real time. So today we will work on a particular uh, subject area for our practice today. We will go to the workforce part and we will work on, just give me a moment, I am just finding, so we will be working on workforce management. Worker assignment real time. This will be our particular subject area first for today's discussion. We can choose anyone. We have absent absenteeism also over here. We can use that also. But for my demonstration, I will use workforce management, worker assignment real time. This workforce management, worker assignment real time. This is the subject area. So we will learn a bit more about this subject area. So I am, as I am explaining you about this subject area, so there is such kind of explanation about all the subject areas. But as per our time limitation, we will understand one of them today. So all the subject areas, first we, are, we need to understand what this subject area does. So all the subject areas answers a particular question. A particular problem, this, so whenever we create, why we create a particular data model, we need to understand that. Because the data model answers a particular question, we, that the new hire, uh, a new hire summary report, what will that answer? That will answer us what are the new hires which are done for that particular time period, if it has parameters also, right? Mm. So this, so this what it, uh, this subject area what it answers is, we'll first focus on that. So mainly it answers three questions, like uh, the particular headcount, what is the total headcount, and the and the distributions of workers by different attributes, like religion, nationality, gender, ethnicity. It also answers some few more questions about workers. That is, what is the current assignment information for a worker? So what is the current, first question is, what is the current assignment information for a worker? What is the current employee headcount for employee category or assignment status? What is the current headcount per job, department, grade, location, business unit, legal employer? employer? The next question can be, what is the headcount of hourly or salaried employees? Next, what is the head, uh, what is the headcount by the payroll? Next is, what is the headcount assignment? What is the headcount assignment count by location, country, region, etc.? The job roles needed for this is human resource analyst and line manager. We'll talk on these things in detail later on. So this uh, particular workforce management worker assignment real time, what it does is, it is primary, uh, okay, so one, one before that one thing, remember we talked about uh, dimension and facts. So whenever I have given you these questions, what, what the subject area answers, uh. you will see that everywhere something is getting measured, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you read the question and let me know what is the thing measured? Where is the question? So all the questions which you wrote down, right? What this answer, what this subject area answers, these all right. are a particular reports, right? Yeah. You're getting my part, right? If a particular uh -huh. data model answers some questions, that means right. these are reports. Right. Right. So when uh -huh. you have noted down, for example, I will read it one of the questions. 
like, like uh, what what is the what is the headcount of a hourly or a salaried employee right so can you just think tell me the thing which you are counting over here or which is, what is the measurable thing over here what is the measurable okay. it's it's a, it's the employee right by identified mm -hmm. by whether they are they are salaried or hourly okay so the word is the headcount yeah. So head count is the is the thing which is being counted. You are getting okay, my point. Yeah, what yeah. I what I mean to uh, say? Okay. Okay. So when you are counting, what is the current head count mm -hmm. of a? What is the current head count by job, department, grade, location, business unit? Right. That means you are counting something, and what you are counting that is the head count. So that right. becomes that becomes the fact or the measure. Mm -hmm. You remember we talked about this thing. Whenever we yes. talk about a star schema, it is comprised of a dimension and a fact mm. table. A dimension mm. is a more of a descriptive kind of a table, which mm. on which holds more of a like a static data, which changes mm. over a longer time period of time, like right. a product table, region table, mm. location, business unit. Yep. So these all are yep. dimensions, department, right. grade. This will not change every day. Right. So okay. we we use all these tables to answer one question ki what is the head count so here the head count is the fact yeah getting my point mm -hmm. yeah so you understood which is the which is the a particular head count which is a particular fact and which is a dimension to identify See the fact is uh, fact is the uh, no the dimension the the master tables for example you know your uh, your employee department location yeah all these, so these are, are master tables those master we call tables it, no kindly yeah. called called is a dimension table exactly so the, I'm just trying to map it so the master okay. tables are referred as dimensions right okay is that right yeah. Uh, if you want to understand in that way, then okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm just trying to correlate what I know. So I think yeah, that's uh, so dimensions are nothing but those master tables. They don't they don't change often. They are um, they are more like a static table. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then. And one then is dimension. Have, so that is yeah. dimension, and another is the fact. Fact, right? Which is fact nothing. Table. Which is the, yeah, which is the yeah. transactional data. Yeah, which gives you, which is a, which is a measurable quantity, right. which we can count. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> about this, uh, so this primary subject area is to report workers' assignment information. So mm -hmm. we are studying about more about the subject area. So whenever there is a subject area, as I was telling about. So it is formed when when uh, it is a predefined one, right? So how it is being mm -hmm. created? We'll talk about that. So dimensions are attributes that you use in your group. So, for example, uh, group by department, group by location, group by, um, for example, performance rate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. One more, way, one more way of understanding it. So yeah, so what I was telling you about is, whenever you, uh, this analysis, so here how they are formed is, first of all, they have import, they have created some connection pools with different tables. And from there they have imported this table. So there are three layers. How they have built this subject area. A very brief uh, like overview on that. So there are three layers. One is the physical layer, one is the BMM layer, or BMM means the business modeling layer, and last is the physical layer. So what they do in the first layer, they import all the data, all the things. So yeah. this is the inline architecture of it. So in physical layer, what we do is we import all the tables and we make the start schema or the different joints between the tables. Which will ret retrieve me the particular answer. Mm -hmm. Right? Then, 
this entire thing is shifted to the or dragged and dropped to the BMM layer. BMM layer is the business modeling layer. What we do over here is we change the names as per of the business world names of the different columns of the table. Suppose we had a, a field called attribute 10 in the table and that corresponds to corp ID of a particular employee. So we rename the tables in the BMM layer and we apply the different kind of business logics if possible we create in the BMM layer. Suppose the discount we need we have the cost price and the selling price and we need to understand the discount which is provided. So we calculate those kind of calculations in the BMM layer. Suppose, suppose we have a field called plant leave and we have a, another field called unplanned leave and we want to create a we want a field called total leaves. So we can add the planned leave and the unplanned leave and we can create a third layer, the third column known as total leaves. So these kind of business logic implementations, we can do it in the BMM layer. And then we drag and drop the thing to the presentation layer. So these kind of, th so this is how the subject area is created. And the output of the process which I told is known as an RPD. So the RPD is then feeded into the instance and that becomes a subject area. But nowadays we have some inbuilt subject areas where they have taken up the most important questions or the most important scenarios which are possible and they have inbuilt some subject areas for us. So they have reduced our efforts. Then we have create direct database query. We can uh, we can create a I was talking about a connection pool, right? If you are not using the uh, particular subject inbuilt subject area, then we can write our SQL statement over here. We can write the name of the connection pool over here, and we can validate the SQL and re retrieve the. This is one way of doing it. So, what is the database pool? Is this the um, the, the the same as database name like? Uh, yeah, it is it's the connection. It's the connection pool name. So when in one connection pool, there can be like more than one tables also. And another process is create analysis from simple logical SQL. You can another way you can write a simple logical SQL directly to the BI server, and it will re retrieve you the columns. So these are three ways how we can define a subject area.